Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Ren. And today I'm going to be reviewing uh, reviewing another kaiju film again. This time it's from the Godzilla series. Again, yes, it's a film I've already reviewed, but I'm reviewing a different version of it. And it's the 50th anniversary edition, I guess you can say, of Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, the one from 1974. So, I just thought, might as well, so, let's get into a shower real quick. Since I've already discussed this film already, I'm going to be fairly brief about the story, so, let's get into it, shall we? Yeah, we're going to see that the there's a fake guys look around here, folks. And yeah, he's being controlled by aliens. So, we're doing like a space traveling kind of a thing again. So, yeah, here we are, I guess you can say. Quite literally, the film opens with Anguirus calling out Godzilla because he knows, he senses that something ain't quite what right. So, of course, that's going to happen. And who later would come in back in the film, of course. Because, again, like I said, he, he realizes something ain't right. But anyway, moreover, let's talk about the human character for a second. So, yeah, this main character here, the dude, does meet up with this woman, who does play an important part in the film, uh oh, they will not take the church about that because the pastors don't seem to like strong women in, in any movie. Oh yeah, but she does play uh, an important part because she's she's like the best friend kind of a character, and she's pretty compassionate. She doesn't want anything bad to happen to him, like at all or anyone ac actually. Of course, eventually, yes, all the human characters realize, holy shit, those two guys are those. What the hell is going on here exactly? And, yeah, so Godzilla is temporarily killed off, and the film does shift the focus on the whole idea that was established earlier, where, yeah, there's like a, a prophecy that's being fulfilled, really. And, yeah, this was also established early on, where there was like this Japanese princess and this royal family that needs to be protected. And there's like a statue thing that the our characters here him to carry all around him, and it's very important. It needs to be transported to some errors because this thing they, they discovered this statue right in some cave where the main character and it and this woman I was referring to a moment ago found inside of a cave. So yeah, it's a part of some sort of um, prophecy plan or whatnot. So yeah, things do become rather crazy. As mentioned before, folks, this is the version of time about the 50th anniversary edition, I guess. So, okay, just open this up for a real quick moment. And yeah. But of course, this, uh, as a, the picture quality isn't too bad. It, I guess considering that this is a DVD, I guess. So, of course, pop it in right in there. There you go. All right, then. Of course, you get the TriStar and the, um, along with some other Cambodia logo come in a uh, home video together then you get some previews of course one of which being for the Tokyo SOS it's in Japanese of course and um okay I didn't care much for that one to be honest with you folks that one's kind of like whatever but then uh, another preview would be that for the stupid ass because of the animated series Monster Wars or whatever I, I didn't I, I personally didn't like it I know some people did thought it was a more of an improvement over the 98 one but I still thought that was bad, if I'm going to be honest with you. But, yeah, they got another, another preview. What's about another movie that does look pretty bad, if you ask me, but... I don't know, I have saw this little preview quite a few times before, but I never looked much into it, because I honestly don't give a shit. But, um, but, yeah, there you go. Anyway, but then eventually you get to the movie. Yeah, there's not much of the screen, really. You get the cover again. I guess a version of the cover, anyway. In the languages, of course, I'm putting it in Japanese, of course. Why? Because I'll be like a, I'll be like a damn purist. That's why. The subtitles for English, French as well. So, yeah, the thing is that, yeah, Alfred and I went to a little party uh, a few days ago. That's it was somebody's 50th birthday party, and we were invited. Yeah, I thought I'd just go there with him before I, I would rewatch the movie because hey, it's free food, and yeah, might as well, guys. I guess you would say. Just let you know as to why th this video is a little late. It's because of this. We went to a little party there for um, a few days ago. So, there you go. 
Plenty to eat. Yeah, we were invited. So I just thought. Him and I were going to go for the free food, I suppose. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. We did donate some money to this, so... I guess it wasn't exactly 100% free, I guess. Whatever. And, yeah, him and I, we had a few beers while we were at it. So I just thought, eh, might as well. And, of course, Air Force wanted to dance a little bit, of course, while I was at it. Yeah, because why not? I mean, again, it's, the, the party itself was getting rather late. So he just figured, oh, what the hell, I guess it wouldn't hurt nobody. Just dance for a little bit. Of course. Yeah. But, yeah, why not? Okay. So, yeah, just dance for a little bit. He got to make some friends, I suppose. Why the hell not? Anyway, what, oh, yeah, I was talking about this movie. So, I, I know, but um, I'm just trying to explain what, what's going on, folks. Yeah, I do like the cover, though. The cover look, does look pretty nice. Like I said, the 50th anniversary edition and whatnot. So, okay. Like I said, the subtitles for English and French, of course. And, um, uh, but, yeah. That's, that's, by the way, the subtitles aren't exactly 100% accurate, by the way. So I thought I'd let you know. And there's a Camboya TriStar logo home video again, I guess. The logo pictures are right there, of course. Right on the sides. And, uh, but yeah. You get to see, uh, oh boy. Yeah, I still, I still got pretty hungry. Maybe I saw another brie, beer. I mean, I had a few too many. I don't know. Whatever. But yeah. Yeah, of course, uh, like I was saying... This is definitely there. And yeah, the thing is that it has better quality than it was. It came into a, the, I guess the English dud version. The the picture quality for that was, was pretty bad, actually. But then compared to the actual Japanese version, of course. Yeah, when it was finally released, that's the, the way it should have been. Yeah, the picture quality is, is much better. than compared to, again, like I was saying, to the American dubbed version, of course, which a lot of people are familiar with. Of course, the... Yeah, it's it's so zoomed in for some reason. It's really zoomed in for... It looks bad. Yeah, but I was comparing that because it's not it's, it's not so zoomed in like it was... Compared, oh, those are two logos again. But yeah, folks. It's not like that, of course. I, I did like that fact that it's, you see the, the picture much better in comparison. And the film also does remind me of a like a James Bond kind of a thing going on there. And of course, might as well throw into the mix, mix and of all this for good measure. Yeah, Planet of the Apes. This is a weird ass movie anyway, so why not? The thing is with King Caesar, the yeah, that got actually actually some inspiration from a a culture, of course. So yeah, this was actually around for for a good while, of course. So so yeah, these kinds of statues do look like this hybrid of a dog and lion kind of a thing. And yes, they're this Chinese, traditional Chinese, artificial things. But origins lie deep in the much older Indian Buddhist traditions. So it's like a combination of uh, like a Japanese, Chinese kind of a thing as well. Because the Japanese did their own kind of thing with this as well in their country. So... Even though you can say that, you can argue that it comes from India in some ways, I guess you can say, and the other people did their own versions of it. So, okay, I can see that in this character. So that's pretty cool, I guess you can say. And of course, he has his own origin story. And, uh, but yeah, he teams up with Godzilla to fight off the monster, but the thing is that, okay, robot, I mean, the machine really reminds me of the Terminator. Because, like, nobody was a match for him, like, at all. He was killing everybody left and right. And, yeah, even when Godzilla came back, he was still giving him trouble. So, um, it's not for the lack of effort. Godzilla was pretty much juiced up because the nature zapped him with electricity, I guess, lightning or whatever. But even then, it still wasn't enough. King Caesar tried to help, but, again, it was not enough. I mean, holy shit. And what do I mean by James Bond? Well, let's just say there's, like, a secret organization with agents, of course. And our main character and that woman I mentioned earlier, unfortunately, just got into the mix of things. But, again, I don't want to spoil anything. Excuse me if I'm being really, really vague here. But, anyway, yeah, of course, I watch this in Japanese, as I was saying earlier, because that's how I prefer these. Like I always said, if something's intended to be a certain way, leave it alone. So, yeah, 
while I wouldn't exactly say that this was a perfect movie by any means, but it's not without its merits. It's definitely one of the better films that came out during the 1970s, I guess you can say. Yeah, it's pretty crazy in its own way, but it's fine. That's the thing with these low-budget features. You get to experiment a bit more. So there's that. But anyway, I'll give this version, even though I kind of wish I could have had more behind the features, there's really nothing, really. So that's really disappointing. But anyway, I'll give this version a Nova rating of a 7.1 out of 10. I give, it a, I give it a 7.1 out of 10. Of course, as always, thanks for watching, and take care. Until next time, see ya. Oh yeah, later.